What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is Secrets of Playboy, well, season one, episode three. This one was a rough one, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this one was all about the bunny, the the bunny club, um, and the Playboy bunnies that were in the actual club. So, the Playboy club started in 1960, and by the late 70s, early 80s, there were over 22 clubs. Um, you had membership. <clears throat> it was $25 to get a key. Um, and by, like I said, by the late 70s, early 80s, there were over 1 million keys. So they had well over 1 million members. Um, we find out that there were key holders, then there were the VIP, then there was the VIVIP. The VIVIP were like celebrities. Um, the VIPs were like ad executives people who worked at like corporate level of the of the um the mansion and so this episode they're actually talking to actual bunnies women who were actual bunnies and they talked to women who became management because you had the bunnies and then you had the bunny mothers um we met jackie nett she was one of the first black bunnies and um we met a few other women um one of the other women she talked about she became a Playboy bunny. She came out of an abusive relationship, a marriage. And she said her brother sort of dared her to do it. Like thinking, you know, you're too shy. You would never really do it. And she went um, on the interview and she got the job. Another bunny talked about how she had really bad acne and bad teeth. She grew up, you know, really poor and her teeth had rotted out. And she had really bad acne and really bad skin. And she said, you know, when she got her, her sort of got herself together then she um went to become a bunny and all of these women in the beginning talked about how being a bunny gave them this confidence gave them this strength made them really really feel like they had this power you know it was very empowering being a bunny you know you were revered you know and playboy but the bunny clubs like i remember like you know my childhood the bunny clubs were starting to sort of die off but i remember you know, the bunny, that, that bunny, the bunny clubs and bunnies were considered like, they were revered. And she talked about how being a bunny was, you know, it, it, they pay, it paid very well, very well, which, um, was the lore, you know, you had women that would come in and that's why, you know, I guess women would want to stay. Um, and that's how the episode started. And then slowly, um, we started getting into some of the dark side of being a Playboy bunny. So let me go through some of this, you guys. Um, Jackie Nett was one of the first bunnies that told her story of her experience. Now, there were very strict rules about the bunnies. The bunnies were not allowed to date the men. The men were not allowed to touch the bunnies. That was the public, the public um, line. That was what they were told. That was what they had to, the line they had to run with publicly. Um, but after hours on their own time, it was sort of like, do what you want to do. I'll look over this way kind of thing. And Jackie said after hours one night, you know, she went to a party, um, with some other bunnies. And when they got to the party, she was drugged and she was assaulted, gang assaulted. I don't want to say the word. And one of the guys that was there was a regular at the club. And she said she went, you know, after she, you know, recovered or what have you, she went back to work and she told the management what happened. And management believed her, you know, and management said um, when he came back into the club, she said she went after, she broke a glass and she went after him with a broken glass. She said, if the floor manager had not stopped her, she was like, yeah, I would have caught a charge that night. She said, but they grabbed me. They saw what was happening. They grabbed me. They got me out of there and they kicked him out the club. She said, because it did not happen on the property of the club, there really wasn't anything that they could do. And she said she didn't want to press charges because during that time period, she said, and even today, when a woman reports an assault, it's, it always gets turned on the woman. And she's absolutely correct. We're really quick to always want to blame the woman. 
um, and find an excuse or reason why the woman did what, she, you know, she asked for it kind of thing. Now, being a, so that was the first, like, really, like, I mean, it was a hard, oh my gosh, like, you heard about the story, but it gets worse. Now, being a bunny, you had to go through basic training, um, sorry, you had to go through basic training, and there was a whole demerit system, so if you didn't show up in proper uniform, you got a certain amount of demerits, if your hair wasn't done correctly, if your makeup wasn't appropriate, if, you know, all of these things, if you started falling off a little bit, you know, all of these things were demerits. Um, you had to be weighed in once a month. I mean, was it once a month or once a week? Once a month. And they would keep the chart on the wall in the, I guess, the bunny room of everybody's weight. And if you gained weight, if you gained more than five pounds, then you were given until the next weigh-in to lose it. And if you didn't lose it by the next weigh-in, then you were suspended until you lost the weight. Um, you had to learn how to do the bunny dip. Which, you know, you had, it was a way that you had to carry your tray and then lean over the men or, you know, patrons and put your glass down to be very sexy. There was a way you had to carry your tray. There was a way you had to order your drinks. There was an order in which you had to order your drinks. And they said if you did not do it in the right order, they would knock your tray down and you had to start all over again and get at the back of the line. Which, of course, would affect your tips if it took you too long to bring a drink out. Um... And it was funny because all the bunnies remembered the order. Like, they just started going off on the order of how you had to order your drinks. It was it was crazy. A lot of the bunnies ended up with kidney infections because the corset of the bunny um, the uniform was so tight that it would, um, it would cause you to, you know, it, it just, it caused kidney infections. Shoot, I ain't no doctor. Um, they talked about how badly their feet would be swollen, right? And so, but the thing was, um, a lot of women, again, the pay was good. So a lot of women stuck it out and they, they, they did the work, you know? And again, it was this empowering, you know, thing, you know, I'm a bunny. But some of the downside was, like I said, publicly, it was the bunnies aren't allowed to date the men. The men can't date the women. And it was a very strict rule, but again, whatever bunnies did outside of that was their own business. And for the VIP members, and certainly the celebrity VIP members, bunnies were actually encouraged to date and see them off, you know, outside of normal business hours. And they were encouraged to do it. Um, so then we start getting into some of these, these dark stories, y'all. So, um, many bunnies were attacked after hours walking to their car. Um, one, because you had patrons that would wait for them to come out and attack them. Two, they had cash, you know. They did make tips. They made money. at So, people would be waiting for them at night. And so, a lot of bunnies got um, attacked, assaulted, sexually assaulted in the parking lot walking to their cars. Um, one of the women who was a bunny, um, a house mother, like a bunny mother, she actually asked the bus boys, asked the management, listen, can the bus boys walk the ladies out at the end of the evening? Because, you know, so many women were being assaulted and things were happening to them. And the response was, no, they're big girls. They can handle it. Uh, Jay Ellis, I mean, excuse me, Jim Ellis worked security. And they talked about how, you know, Hugh had a lot of former LAPD that was on his payroll or his security. And so they had connections so that when things would happen, it wouldn't get out in the public or wouldn't get to law enforcement. Or if it did, he would be able to pull strings and stuff would disappear. Um, they talked about how the bunnies were trained that if something did happen, they were not to call the police. They were to call the mansion first and internal security would handle it. Um, the women said that they know that Hugh knew what was going on because he would get the security reports once a week. If anything happened, if there was any sort of incident, it was in that report and he got it. It didn't go to the police, but it did go to him. So 
Let me tell you about two stories that um, they talked about. And they did talk about some of the celebrities that came through there. And it was pretty much the who's who of the 60s and 70s. And they had pictures of them there. And again, just because they were there doesn't mean that they did bad things. But some, we're going to get to one in a minute. So there was one resort out in New Jersey called Great Gorge Resort. And there was... um, the rules there were very strict. One of the bunnies spoke on the fact that the rules at Great Gorge were very, very strict to the point where she complained to her mentor and the house mother, the bunny mother there. And she said, well, there's a reason why the rules are so strict. I mean, they weren't allowed to use the bathroom in the resort. They had to walk all the way back to the bunny quarters to use the bathroom. If they were found using the bathroom with inside the hotel, they were fired. The, where the bunny quarters were, there was um, a fence around it. There was security. Um, no one was allowed inside that area that wasn't authorized. And, vice, you know, people weren't supposed to come out um, unless they were working kind of thing. And what we find out was um, there was a really good reason for that. Once there was an incident where there were some men that showed up that pretended to be VIPs. I guess they had a, because you had a card. So I'm guessing they had some sort of a forged card or they bought it from somebody, stole it from somebody or whatever. And they talked to some of the ladies. They were young. They were newer bunnies. They hadn't been there that long. And he said, hey, you know, we're Hollywood producers. We're working on a movie. Why don't you guys come and hang out with us? We're looking for some models, looking for some people to put in a movie. And, you know, it's easy to sit here now and be like, why? They fell for the oldest trick in the book. But, okay, they were young. They were naive. They would, and they might have even been thinking, these guys are full of it. We're just going to go hang out with them for a little while. It is what it is. Like, we know they're not really going to put us in no movie. But certainly they didn't anticipate what ended up happening to them. And so what happened was, and they were like, hey, bring some of your friends. We're going to have a party. So they recruited some of their friends, um, and they were the, like a, the younger bunnies. They went to these guys' house, like up in the hills somewhere in New Jersey, and they were sexually assaulted, they were drugged, and they were held there for two or three days. They were also videotaped while they were there, and when they were finally released to leave, they were threatened, and they were told, if you go to the police, if you go to the authorities, we're going to release these tapes, and your life is going to be over, your careers will be over. And again, you guys, this is like the 1970s, so the mindset is that's no one's going to believe us. It's our word against theirs. They have videotape of us. We're just going to, you know. So they went back, and they didn't tell anybody, but they did speak amongst themselves, and word eventually got out what happened. So you would think that Playboy security would kind of get on it. It's not what happened. The girls got fired and escorted off the property and basically told, you need to be quiet, don't say nothing about it gone now and it eventually the story eventually did get to law enforcement and it was swept under the rug security swooped in um did whatever they had to do to bury the story to make sure that playboy didn't get in any trouble to make sure the story didn't hit the newspapers and that's when they put those rules in place and you know the woman telling the story talked about how she felt for those girls like those girls and, you know, I almost, on one hand, I almost wish that they were able to find one of those girls to be able to tell their story. But there were enough stories told that, you know, you did not need to hear everybody's story. Um, so that was in New Jersey. So then we spoke with, um, I think her name was Jackie. She was the one that was the house mother. And she became um, a bunny mom after she hurt her back, and she hurt her back, I believe, on the job. So when she came back, she couldn't do the bunny dip anymore because she broke her back, and her body just couldn't couldn't move and bend that way anymore. And she was, you know, um, she was um, promoted to management, and then she was in charge of the girls. She said that in her tenure, she knows for a fact that there were at least 40 girls whose voices had been silenced at the club where she worked at. And what she means by that is that they were assaulted in some way and they were not allowed to go to the police. They were not allowed to tell their story, nor did the club back them up or have their back. 
Um, and they just, she said they had, they definitely had a high turnover. Um, and again, these stories were unlike Jackie's. Now, Jackie said, listen, my, my people had my back. Like, at the club where I worked, they definitely had my back. Um, but the rest of these girls, this, this is just not their story. So, she said that while she worked, um, as a, a house mother, she also was a part of what they called the cleanup crew. And the cleanup crew was literal and figurative, right? When these girls would get in trouble, they were told to call the mansion and not call the police. So when they were called, she was one of the women that would have to, when I say clean up the girls, clean the girls up. Wash them, bind them, clean them up. Um, if there was an incident, security would clean that up as far as making sure it didn't hit the press, making sure it didn't get to the media. Now, up at the mansion, the bunnies would go up to the mansion, and again, the expectation at the mansion was like, hey, the VIP of the VIPs are here, and basically whatever they want, you give it to them, even if it was your body. Um, they said that a lot of the men indulged in anal sex, including Hugh Hefner. Because you couldn't get the girls pregnant that way. Um, a couple of the people corroborated this cleanup story, this cleanup crew situation, because the girls were not allowed to go to the hospital. They would be found if they were in the bushes, if they were laid all over the property, if they were in the grotto, whatever. They were found, they were cleaned up and sent home. So this final story, you guys, and let me just say this. I am repeating what was in the show. I am in no way, shape, or form saying that this story is true. Don't come for me, okay? Okay. Because I feel like the estate of Don Cornelius is about to have a whole field day with this um, documentary. But neither here nor there. Story was told that one night down to the club, Don Cornelius was a VIP. This was the 1970s when Soul Train was at the top of the tops and he was, you know, the man. He would frequent the club. One night, he had a couple of bunnies sitting in his VIP. When the night was over, he invited them back to his place. They went. They were uh, sisters. Again, not going to judge them for making a bad decision, okay? They decided to go home with that man that night. And again, maybe they was down for a little good time. I'm not saying that they were or they weren't. However, comma, when they got, allegedly, when they got to Don Cornelius' house, they were not heard from for three days. They were bound, they were drugged, they were assaulted with objects, penetrated with objects annually, and amongst other things that happened to them, they were there for three days until one of the sisters finally was able to get to a phone and just as she was trained to do, instead of calling the police, she called the mansion. And security came to Don Cornelius' house, picked those girls up, and um, they were cleaned up. They weren't allowed to go to the hospital. They certainly weren't allowed to tell their story to the police. And not only did they never go to the police and press charges, but Don Cornelius was never put out that club. He was back in the club the next week, and there was never any sort of playboy disciplinary action taken against him. Now, again, y'all, that is allegedly, I don't know if that man did that or not. It was in the documentary, Don't Come For Me, Come For Them, okay? But I thought it was interesting that that's the only name they mentioned. Now, you sat there and gave me a whole hour long's worth of how all these women were assaulted, this, this, and that, and how the celebrities, that's the only name you got. It's Don Cornelius, who's coincidentally, he ain't here to tell his story, defend himself. Now, I've been rocking with y'all on this documentary, but I don't know how I felt about that one. If you're going to tell the story, you tell the story to somebody that can defend himself, okay? You're going to tell the story about a man who is no longer with us. I don't know how I feel about that one, document, uh, Playboy. But neither here nor there. That was the, it, this was a rough one, y'all. Go and watch it. I mean, you know, there was some... Y'all go and watch it. It was really, really hard 
to listen to these women tell their stories, but I believe them. I believe them. I, I well, I don't know about this song called Pretty Bitch. That's alleged. But do I believe that these women were assaulted? Absolutely. Do I believe that these women were treated like objects and were, you know, expected to off the books entertain these men? Absolutely, I do. Um, and do I believe that the women weren't treated right and weren't allowed to tell their story and go to the hospital and get therapy? Absolutely, I believe that. And I think after this documentary, I think more women are going to come forward and tell their stories. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments, peace.